Um, I'm welcoming you all uh, tonight to this wonderful gallery space uh, on Cork Street. We're so lucky to be able to be here tonight in, in Cork Street because as some of you may know, Cork Street is being redeveloped. Um, this will be our penultimate, the gallery, Cynthia Corbett Gallery's penultimate exhibition on, on Cork Street, at least for the foreseeable future, and hopefully we'll be able to come back here in 2016 when the development um, is finished. Um, but it's, So it's really a fitting place um, to have, to host, uh, Deborah Azapati's uh, first solo exhibition in her hometown of London. Um, we're really proud to be having this exhibition. I don't want to start crying, but um, <laughs> it's, um, it's very, very, very special. Uh, the work that you're seeing here um, in the gallery is a, a culmination of work that um, Deborah has done over the past 10 years, although her practice is longer, and which you will discover during the conversation later. But it's very, very exciting. We have worked from 2004 to 2014. And everything from very small, intimate drawings uh, to very large, new, bold paintings that uh, Deborah has just produced. Uh, in the very front of the gallery, in the window, as you came in, you probably saw something called shush. Um, it's a very uh, important, iconic image of Deborah's, been published worldwide, and we thought it was you know, quite fitting to uh, have that at the front of the gallery. Um, I'm, it gives me really great pleasure to introduce both Deborah Azapati and esteemed um, art critic and journalist Estelle. Love it. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Um, Estelle has written, um, amongst many other things, um, a critique on Deborah Zapati, and for the book uh, that is being published as of tomorrow night, um, we have a wonderful piece in the book by Estelle. Um, and so we thought it was really fitting for the two of them to have an in conversation, uh, which will be filmed by the lovely Christina. Um, and I think after maybe a little while there will be questions, maybe? A few questions, um, depending on how they feel. But um, without further ado, thank you. Deborah thank you. and Estelle. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'm really honoured to be here, surrounded by this wonderful artwork and this be set by this one foreman. <laughs> if nobody's met Deborah before, she is as colourful, bright, with as big a personality as any of her paintings. Those of you that have met her before will agree, right? <laughs> right. She's climbed the art ladder to art success in high heels, like no other woman has ever done before. She has done more for women and the paintbrush than anybody else, and I, I'm... I've, one of them is me. I think the one with her legs out of the red convertible is me. I had two convertibles <laughs> many, many years ago, before child and before marriage. So I don't know. That would be like an old Ford, I think, back in those days. So I don't know. But, but they remind me of my youth. So it's good to feel young again without having a facelift. You know. Perfect. Now, there's something Wonder Woman-esque about her because while she's painting, she seems to inspire hope for everybody, not just women, but, but the man who fancies the woman as well, because this is all about love and falling in love, birds and bees, yeah? yeah. Birds and bees do it, everybody does everybody. it, she hates it. And um, <laughs> she has this knack of doing it with love, not with punches and kicks. You know, if, if only feminists would take a look at uh, Deborah as a party to show you can be a woman to be equal to a man instead of the likes of the professor of drawing from the RA, won't mention any names, Tracy, but, you know, who seems to think that you have to do it um, through alcohol and sleeping with people in tents. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure that she paints, not with a paintbrush, but with a feather, because she tickles us, right? She makes us laugh. And laughter is the best aphrodisiac. So these are paintings that you will fall in love with and fall in love by. Woody Allen famously said, I think, if not, he did tonight, right, <laughs> that the best place to fall in love is in an art gallery because there you will meet your perfect partner because you share an interest in the most important thing of all, which is art. 
So please, if you're single, flirt by a single guy and then buy it and take it home. You know, it's a long-term love affair. Lots of people, actually, in your home, you've probably got a Deborah as a party greeting card. At home. <coughs> I'm sure you've all got the, uh, the sunflowers and the hay wain and the water lily pond, but you've probably, more people have probably got an as a party. So they are you, they are me, they are a gift from the artist, and I want to know, how do you do it? How, how, how do you start? You've got your, your not your feather, you've got your paintbrush in your hand. How do you start? I just think of it, and I just paint it. It's think of what? What's it? Something has to tickle your fancy. Something has to make you smile. And if it makes you smile, I only paint what I like. And if I like it and someone else likes it, that's great. But I just paint what I like. But you paint the subject matter, and it's almost like um, going to the cinema, or it's almost even more than that. I mean, the most famous portrait in the world has to be the Mona Lisa. This is today's <laughs> Mona Lisa, right? It's true, this is today's Mona Lisa. So, you know, you're, you're very humble, Leonardo. Well, <laughs> well, it's just fun. It just comes from a sense of fun. It's just and it's fun. just a sense of fun, and it's no more than that. And, if, and if, if it's fun, if it's quirky, if, it's, if it makes me smile, it's as simple as a smile. And then you add to it and you develop it and you think, yeah, 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 that's good, that's good, that's good. And you just carry on, you're lost in that painting. So um, it's almost an accident in a sense, <laughs> but it's because it's, but it's, it's not planned in that way. It's just something that's nice. It's mm. very simple, it's just nice. Mm, mm. And it's a very British sense of humour, you know, this almost... Um, so Liechtenstein, um, America famously has Liechtenstein, and we've got as a party. And it's very British humour. It's distinctly that slap and tickle, kiss me quick, um, on the pier, um, carry on type film. Those of you that are familiar with that will know when I say I'm sitting on the throne, <laughs> will realise, <laughs> yes. The, the but it's but a moment. It's, just, it's, it's a moment in time that you can capture and paint. And it, it, like a photograph, but it's not a photograph, because it's... I like pictures that move. I like things to move on the canvas, to move on the picture. And, and you, it is just a moment. And like the Impressionists, capturing a, a fleeting moment in time. It's all moments. But you yeah. work from real models, don't you? You don't yeah. work from photographs. These are all you, my family, my friends. <laughs> so round here, this is your this family is and friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are all people that, you know. that I've known, that I've asked, or I've approached, or objects that I like, or that I have, or that I've bought, or something that I think I could um, develop from something. And there's no reason for liking it other than it makes you smile. Also. They, they, do yeah. make, they do make you yeah. smile, and that's the wonderful thing. I mean, to me, these are much more powerful and potent than homeopathic medicine, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you need a homeopathic pill and to look at pictures. Well, and then it'll work, you need both. Yeah. They're, they're very humorous, um, the colours stand out. I mean, ideally, you'd want to have a whole, own a whole room of your paintings, not, you know, not just the one, but a whole room, because each one is like a film, like a storyboard. So it's like, um, they remind me of um, when Harry met Sally, when it's, I'll have what she's having, you know, in the deli, uh, the cat's deli scene. But it's all that. Yeah, yeah, all and the graduates yeah. as well, with um, Dustin but Hoffman. There are just and moments that maybe we know those lines, but they are immortalised, but in my way, and they're not necessarily taken from films, but we're inspired by everything. We're inspired so by everything. the inspiration will just come in that moment. But even art history, you know, if we delve back into art history and we see how um, the female has been depicted, mainly by men, so we've got yeah. Manet's Olympia, which is of the prostitute, very yeah. seductive, but a bit saucy, a bit threatening, looking at the viewer as the, as the uh, customer, and then we've got that lovely Fragonard painting of the swing, and she's Nicholas, yes. by the way. Yeah. So, but these are women and men that are wanting to do this. This, this isn't. Um, this is my interpretation, but just of the moment. But they're they're there. They're bold. They're out there. They're happy to do it. Yeah, but your your forefathers are the greats in in art history. You know, you're oh, you are yeah. creating a new tradition. Mm. You are changing the course of art history by repainting. Manet's Olympia, Fragonard's The Swing, you know, in, we'll a, in a... Huh? <laughs> we'll see. It, well, we do see. We see yeah. it here, you know, and they are Nicholas, a lot of them. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know, you've done it your way, and the colours fascinate me. And also, when you look at the paintings, you will see they may look 
flat, okay? And that's the trick, because they're not. You go up close, stick your nose up against it. There's no alarms here, are there? No, no, no. And you will see the brush marks. You will see the brush strokes. You will see the paint applied on it really beautifully. And I, I find your colours amazing, because I immediately recognise an as a party painting from a distance, you know? Eve Klein had his blue, international Eve Klein blue, as a party has hers, yes, definitely. right? Yeah, 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 but I love that blue, I love that. Tell me about your blue, I mean, how do you mix? But, but it's the same, it just speaks, that's exactly it behind you. Yes, that's completely, that's the one. It, it's my favourite colour, it's just colour. But your colours, how do Someone's you do... Slightly... How, how, how... <laughs> Paint, you mix it, big bowl, pour it into a tub, keep it screw top lid and that's it. There's no formula that you have to remember what part to what part, but I'm working in massive quantities. These are big paintings, so mm. you want it to be even, it has to be it has to be right. Sometimes I can use a colour exactly as it is, mm. and sometimes it's just not, and sometimes you just play with it to make it the colour you want, and I don't even know how I've got it. It just looked right. It's magic. So, yes. <laughs> but it's like cooking. You do the same mm. with cooking. You can learn with it. That's enough salt, that's enough pepper, that'll do. How do you so. have enough time to cook when you're no. painting? <laughs> no. Yeah, because you must be painting every day. I paint every single day. Yeah, I paint every day. And I cook every day. Mm. Mm. And like, yes, it's true. Uh, the chicken is really a pain. Chicken <laughs> so is a pain. really a pain. Okay. So, your use of light I find fascinating because it's almost as if there's a torchlight behind the paintings. They're so fluorescent. They almost have this medieval stained glass church-like spiritual quality to them. How, how have you managed but to that's a combination that? of how you, if you put a skin tone with yellow, it's going to be dull. If you use, you oh know, yeah, secret. You know, but but it's but it is. It's just. It's, it's what colour you put with colour. So, yeah. for example, that blue will stand out more with the red, yet yes. there is the blue with the paint, yes. blue and white, and just an accent of red nails. So it's just the combination that you use and how much skin tone is going with that background colour. So but that takes a real skill. So your skill, but I you don't acquired... Think it's just something, I just think, oh, that's nice, I'll do that blue, or that's nice, I'll do that red, or pink would look good. You know, you, you just know what's going to work. I, I don't even know when you think about it. It's just, I'll use that. So, so it's instinctive, completely. Instinctive. But it's very emotional, and it's also very intellectual. Um, the compositions are perfect. Uh, an, an inch to the left or right, and the compositions would fail. That that academically perfect. Where, where did you... Well, that's just an accident. I mean, that's just <laughs> that's a complete accident. No, I mean, but everyone's made a certain way. We all have shoulder blades in the same kind of place, and kneecaps where kneecaps should be, and you have to put it that way. You can't put something where it shouldn't be. So you, you sort of know that's the skeleton, that's how it's going to be. So if I get it right, that's really lucky. <laughs> so I don't, I don't, it's, it's just how it's meant to be. It makes sense. It has to make sense. So although it's pop art, the right line has to be in the right place. It can't be in the wrong place because then it looks wrong. And sometimes I've painted things and it does look wrong and I think, hey, that looks right. So, mm. I mean, there's no, mm. there's no reason. Even an accident can be good. Mm. You know, it's, it, it's the way it can work. Mm. And, mm. It, and even if it doesn't make sense on a skeleton, if I'm doing figurative, it can still be okay because it's pop art. Well, I, I mean... But, I mean, but to me. It, yes. Well, maybe not to everyone else, but I think that's okay. Well, I think... I think they're more than okay, but perfect line. Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Perfect line. No. You, your your composition and your line is absolutely superb. You know, any thicker, any narrower, it wouldn't work. And the way that you contain them, the colours with the black, is like looking at a stained glass window in a magnificent church. I've just got a steady hand and. And you're so engrossed that it's easy to do. You don't even think about it. It's just something you're you're doing, and you've got the right balance. You're standing still. I paint standing up all the time. I never sit down. And so it's 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 easy for me. It's not difficult because well, it's mm -hmm. because you get used to do. You know the lines going boom 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 boom, and that's the line. And so and you have to get it right actually. You can't get it wrong on those lines well, because it will mark and it leaves a mess and. You can't use water on it, it won't come off, the sun's drying it quickly. You know, the chicken's it's, cooking. The chicken's cooking, <laughs> you know, potatoes need putting on. <laughs> so it's, and so you, you do it. But other things, those kind of lines, are, are very different from when you're doing curly hair. Curly hair, I, I like messy curly hair. 
I don't like everything even and placed mm. and everything mm. neat. And curly hair is fun, and sometimes I'm good now. I do the hair, mm, mm, and mm. you know, and it's different. It's a different kind of technique, mm. but it it is still, I guess, a perfect line. Mm. But um, but it's a perfect messy line. But it's meant to be. Mm, mm. Yeah. So yours is your, yours is as a party colour. So we talked about the Eve Klein blue. You've got as a party blue. Yes. You've got your as a party line. Yes. And I'm sure you know. Um, Renoir famously said. Um, when he painted women, he said, I don't paint with a paintbrush, I paint with my, begins with a P, okay? <laughs> and I'm sure that Deborah as a party must have taken that paintbrush bat on and run with it. She is the Emily Pankhurst of the art world. She's done more for women, you know, that than, than other artists have. Now, this, as I said, is the, is today's, um, Mona Lisa, okay, this shush painting. And of course the trend today, because everybody wants to be up on the next big thing. We are making history tonight by being part of the next big thing. Now, the selfie, okay, <laughs> Nelson Mandela's selfie, uh, sorry, uh, Obama's selfie at Nelson Mandela's memorial service, yes, and um, Ellen's selfie at the Oscars, all right, I want everybody to do that. I'm going to take myself in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to tweet it, okay? Come on. This is the Mona Lisa today, please. So you all have to show. Ready? Shush. Come on. So count them in. One, two, three. Oh, one minute. Hang on. <laughs> oh, you're all nice and quiet. Oh, that's good. Wait a minute. All right, ready? Would you like her to poke our tongues out? <laughs> no, 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 she's not poking her tongues. Right, she's shushing it. Okay, I'm going to tweet that out later. Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> everyone tweet it, be tweet, be tweet. It's going to go viral. We're having an as a party. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're all here. You've all got the paintings to look at. There's a fantastic coffee table art book. Which is out it's really wonderful. It'll tomorrow. Be, it'll be here tomorrow. <coughs> tomorrow. Yes. It's and I nice. think it's got a wonderful forward. It's got the most amazing forward. And it's got <laughs> a, <laughs> it's got a limited it's got a really edition wonderful. print. Yes. Has anybody got any questions? Because yeah. I talk all the time about art. My husband hates it. I think. <laughs> so we all talk about art. Huh? We all talk yeah. about art. It just Does, has anybody got any questions? Yes. I still talk quite rightly about the Britishness of the humour and the Britishness of the, of the art, but there's obviously a, a link, shall we say, to Liechtenstein and the American tradition of pop art as well. How do the Americans react to what you're doing? Um, I think that question has to be for Cynthia, because Cynthia takes the paint of the paintings shown a lot in America, in Miami and Palm Beach, Hampton, so, uh, and, I and I'm not there, so Cynthia's there. Uh, so I'll just say that... Um, the first time we ever showed uh, Deborah in America, um, one of her originals, was in New York in 2008. And literally, people were coming on the stand and just, yeah, they, they were just breathless. Um, and from that moment on, uh, wherever we showed Deborah's work, the reaction was always, wow, positive, I love it. You know, and, and she, um, so we built on that, and uh, Deborah is in some of the largest uh, private collections now in America. And the hanging with, as she should be, with Warhol, with the Chin Spine, with other, you know, really famous post-war uh, artists. She's in their, um, in their club, quite rightly. Woo! More questions? <laughs> May I ask a silly question? I'm, I'm intrigued at the acrylics, and I wonder what brushes you use. Um, I use the, the brushes that I make called Pro Art. I use all of them. They're so, big ones. Sorry? Large. Very large, very small, some that I really shouldn't use. And at the end of the day, or when I finished it, you know, our hair's going, they say, I just chuck it behind me. At the end of the week, there's a pile, <laughs> and, it's, and I, I, um, I go through a lot of brushes, but I think it's important to always use the right brush. It makes a very big difference, but you get to know your brushes. I buy a lot at a time, really a lot. I buy a couple of hundred in one go, because I, I'm, um, 
And you use them a lot, I use them very easily. If I do, I just chuck them behind. Sorry? <laughs> I hope so. My accountant's here, we can ask him. <laughs> These are also, um, apart from references to, to cinema and film, um, so like the the, uh, the Graduate and um, When Harry Met Sally, also very musical, you know, each colour is like a musical note and, and the paintings sing and vibrate. Those of you that suffer from synesthesia, you're lucky tonight because you look at the paintings and you'll hear the most wonderful tunes um, coming from them. And this really is an exceptional series of paintings Size matters. <laughs> Sorry, Mo. Size, size, size does matter. matter. Size really yeah, does matter. yeah. These the are huge. The <laughs> there we are. Absolutely. Yeah. These are huge. Yeah. Yeah. And do you, do you take commission? How do you pick your models? Do you take commissions? Tell us a bit a bit about your models. That would be interesting. Yeah, I want to hear about yeah, your models. models. You know, who they from? You know, um, um, your daughter's my daughter. Well, you know, my, a, a lot of my family are instantly my models, and also my friends. But I choose. Who I want. There's everybody I'm your friend. Has, you're my friend, I'll do you. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has a part of them, you just have to find the part. But the part that you like, the part that talks to you. But, but everybody has something, you know, you're like the ankles of that one, the legs of that so one. So do you say to people, can you take your trousers off? <laughs> yeah. Want, you do? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But sometimes I don't, and sometimes I just undress them. because With your eyes? Yeah, because yes. you know, <laughs> with your paintbrush. Because yes. you, know, you know how it's she going to be. She can see you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how it's going to be, and everyone's different, but I like real people, not models. Yeah. You know, I, I well, models are real people, but you like no, no, real, no, I don't like three, the, in the flesh. Like really thin no, models no. that would be in an agency or something. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. real people that um, they're properly made, you know. Yes, <laughs> the, yes. You know, and then I think that's what makes the paintings. They're just real, you know, everyday people. That, um, that's not their job, you know. And everybody has something in them that's, mm. that's nice. Mm. Where well, you capture it on canvas, and as I say, on the, on the throw. On furniture as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's just lovely, absolutely. It's fun. And it's you can really tickle. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Tickle feet. Any other questions? Any more questions? Inter interestingly, I sort of don't see many faces. They're cropped out, generally. Where you can veil a lot with the body language. It's almost as though I know the body person language without seeing the face. Yes, yes. You don't need a face. I do, I do sometimes do faces. Um, it depends what I'm painting. They're not here. But the body can say a lot. And a, a face gives away expression, mood, everything. But, but they're just not here, that's all. There's body parts here. There's a lot of figurative work here. I don't just do figurative, but There's there a is lot a lot of personality of here. Mm. Mm. It's quite noisy, isn't it? It's yeah. quite, I mean, I look up and gosh, I mean, it is. You know, an artist never sees their work unwrapped or unpacked. It's packaged, it's sent, it's shipped, it's cargo. You know, you, you never see it like this, ever. So for me, I walk around and think, wow, that's noisy. <laughs> <laughs> I must be insane. <laughs> because you just don't see things hung like this. Never. Not in your studio. It's, you know, one's done, that's it. You can smile. You know, it starts its own journey. Make a wish. Sorry? Make a wish. Do, do you want me to say the wish? Just Nothing, just it's carry on, choice. carry on, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, it's nice. Deborah's been um, dubbed the Queen of Pop Art as well, so long may she reign. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.